Hello, this is Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and the partner and CTO at Canvas Consulting. In this video, I'm going to give you an NN demonstration of the Leave Requests Power App Sample Template. The Leave Request Power App Sample Template uses Excel as a backend data source. You could also adapt it to use other data sources, such as the common data source, a SQL Server, or anything else you can really connect to from a Power App. This Power App allows people to log in as an employee or a manager to both submit and approve or deny vacation requests or other types of leave requests. I'm going to walk you through the demo now and show you how it works. If you haven't seen my other videos about this particular app, I encourage you to check them out. The first app will show you how you can download, install, and configure the Leave Request Power App template so it shows up in your list of Power Apps like this. The other videos are also deep dive videos that talk into deeper lengths about some of the development concepts we use to create the apps. Now when you first load the Leave Request app, you're prompted with this screen right here. You can either log in as an employee or a manager. Now the important thing to point out here is when shipping a sample Power App template like this, we really don't have a good way to put a mechanism in place that ensures if you're an employee or a manager. So when you roll this Power App out to your own organization, you will want to adjust this code so merely clicking a button doesn't allow you to have manager versus employee rights in the app. Perhaps you could use the Office 365 connector and look to see if a user was a member of a particular AD group and then grant them manager access accordingly. All right, so I'm going to start the demo now. I'm going to start off by pretending I'm an employee who is putting in a leave request. To do that, I click Login as an Employee. The first time you open the app, it will look like this, and you will see in your All tab here of the filter for the different leave requests that there's none pending, approved, or declined. You can also click on the Leave Balance tab right here and see the vacation days, sick leave, floating holiday, jury duty, bereavement leave, etc. available to you. Now before I go further, what I'd like to do is show you the actual Excel sheet behind the hood that is backing up this app and holding its data. It's here in my OneDrive. When you first open the app, every time a user opens the app, if they don't already have a record created for them in this balance worksheet here, the Power App will create that record for them and it will give them these default values of how long each vacation day is um, allocated for each type. You can see that this Power App, uh, or pardon me, this Excel sheet here in this particular worksheet is tracking how many days you're allocated and how many you've used for each of the categories. Also within the Excel sheet is the holidays that appear in the Power App, as well as the different leave requests that you've made. You'll notice here that there are five holidays predefined in the Power App. You could add more for your company. You could also adjust the vacation balances for your company as well. That's done inside of the Leave Request Power App in the editor. Heading back to the Leave Request app now, now we know where this data came from. If I click the Company Holidays tab here, I can see the data that came out of the Excel sheet that told me about the company holidays. We thought we'd put it in the app because it's helpful information to know when you're creating a Leave Request. The About tab allows you to learn more about each type of leave. So for example, for vacation, it tells you it's provided to all employees for these purposes. For jury duty, for example, it tells you the stipulations to qualify for a jury duty leave request, and so on and so forth for the other types of leave requests that you could make. So let's actually see the app in action now and walk through a scenario where I submit a leave request and then I act as a manager as well to approve or deny it. To make a leave request, the first thing you'll do is click the plus button here or in the top corner. It'll both take you to this page. First, you pick the type of leave you plan to take. In this case, I'm going to select vacation. 
you can see that my current balance, the app knows I have 10 days to choose from. Let's say that I want to take vacation sometime next week. I'll take Monday off, for instance. So I'll pick that I'm going to take Monday off. Then it automatically looks at who my manager is in Active Directory. But for this purpose, I'm going to actually submit this request to myself so I can get the emails and quickly process them and show you how this app works. Then you'll assign your leave a title. After you do that, you can put in a description about it. When you're done with that, just click Next. Now it shows you that if you take this vacation on the 28th, you'll be down to nine days left of a vacation balance. An important thing to keep in mind is the calculation here is really smart. It takes into account the holidays that are registered inside of the Excel sheet, as well as any weekend days that are not work days. So if you overlap your vacation request over those things, they won't affect what your leave balance is when this calculation is shown here. Once you do that, then you click the Submit Request button. The Submit Request button is going to commit the information to the Excel seat, and it's also going to trigger an email to your manager to ask them to approve that vacation request. You can see that the new item is now in the pending state here. We have it in the All filter, but I could also jump over to the Pending filter and see it here as well. If I click on the item, it allows me to see the detail about it as well as click the Edit button if I wish to make changes to it. Here you can see the email that is sent when a request is submitted. Notice my name is both the to and the from person here in this email because I'm playing the role of the employee and the manager so I can quickly get these emails and move on with the video. But this is the email that would go to your manager. Here you can see the description, the type, the title, all of that is inside of there as well as the dates that are being requested. So now I'm going to open up the Power App again, and this time I'm going to log in as the manager. To do that, I click the Login as a Manager button. Here I can see that I have pending requests here. So if I click on this pending request, now that I'm logged in as the manager, the functionality lights up a little bit different. It gives me the opportunity to approve or decline or send an email right here to the person who made this request. If I fill out the subject and message and click send here, it'll send an email. So if I come back to this one, I'm going to decline it to start with. And when we decline it, it's going to mark that as such in Excel, and it's going to send a message back to the person who made that request. And I have a great manager here myself who says, no dice, take more time off. So I'm going to send that email now, and now that email has been sent. And here I can open up the email and see that my manager told me to take more time off. Not a bad manager to have right there, being yourself and all. So next thing I'm going to do is refresh the Power App now to go back to my persona as an employee. So now I can come back in as an employee here, and I can see that that request was declined. I can now click on it and click Edit. They told me to take more time off, so I think I'll take off until the end of the month instead and now resubmit my request. Notice my new balance is down to six days here. So those calculations are happening in real time as you fill out the form. Now I've filled out the form again and resubmitted my request. This will again send the email and update the Excel sheet with the new values that I've created. We can see the request goes back to the pending state, and if I refresh the page here, now I can then log in again as the manager. We can see we're back in the pending state here. The time has been updated to four days. That sounds good to me as a manager, so now I will approve this particular request. In between, 
before I go and prove this one, I'd like to show you that another email showed up when I made the request for the vacation to be four days long. And here you can see May 28 to May 31 reflects the new dates that were submitted for approval. Now the manager can approve it and send an optional message back and that will send the email and approve the request. When the data is in, uh, updated in the Excel sheet, we will now see that if we go to the all filter, we can see that this particular vacation day was approved. If we refresh the page and come back in one more time as the person who made the request, the employee, now we can see that if we go into the approved area, we do have one particular item that was approved and we can see that. We can also look at our vacation balance here and we can see that we're now down to six days as well. I'd also like to show you that when that request was approved and the manager sent that email that said have a great time, here you can see it showed up in the inbox. Now I'm going to come back to OneDrive and I'm going to open up that Excel sheet again that I showed you at the beginning. I had to close it while I was using the app because if I don't close it, Power Apps will throw an error that tells me that that particular file is locked for editing and it can't write to it. So that's something to keep in mind if you ever stand this up on your own. Don't leave the Excel sheet open. Now that we have the Excel file open, we can see where the Power App updated the data. Notice here, in the Vacation Used column, we now have four days of vacation because they were approved have been marked as used up. In the Leave Worksheet here, we can see that we now have a row of data correlating to the data I entered to make that leave request. Notice it contains the title, detail, start and end date, the leave type, the requester, and the approver, as well as the status. This information is all written by the Power App and read by the Power App to make this scenario work. We hope that this Power App comes in handy for you and you can plug it into your organization to manage leave requests as well. Keep in mind that in order to make it really work in this scenario where you have some people approving requests and some people just making requests, that you will need to update the code in the Power App a little bit on the home screen for those buttons that allow you to log in as a manager or just a person who is an employee making requests for leave. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it came in handy for you. I'll see you next time.